So Sydney Powell has a new home and a new mugshot. And no, I'm not talking about Trump's former attorney. I'm talking about the Sydney Powell, spelled S-Y-D-N-E-Y, who recently received 15 years to life in prison in Ohio in Akron for horribly doing away with her mother, Brenda Powell, on March 3rd, 2020. Brenda was her so-called best friend. Well, the 23-year-old Sydney is now known as inmate W112033 at the Ohio Reformatory for Women. She has an expected release date or parole eligibility date set way in the future, September 12th, 2038. With Sydney's next parole board hearing and review month scheduled for July 2038. So Sydney was admitted to ORW, as we call Ohio Reformatory for Women, on October 12th, 2023. And prior to that, just as promised, the judge appointed her a public defender because she could no longer afford, apparently, to pay for her fancy schmancy lawyer who did his best. He really gave it the good old law school try to get Sydney off on not guilty by reasons of insanity. There is a new 100 bed mental health facility out at ORW and perhaps the judge really took into consideration this 58 pages of letters that people wrote into the judge. Sydney's relatives and friends, they were begging for the least sentence possible and after that they wanted her to go to ORW because of this new treatment center. It's a one of a kind therapeutic facility. It provides increased programming and treatment in a space that has unique features, such as specialized lighting and acoustics, enhanced technology, calming outdoor spaces, a garden, and a teaching kitchen. Man, I'd like to tour this place. Hopefully it will help women like Sydney. The ORW houses about 2,000 women, and nearly half of them are receiving some type of behavioral health services. Now, I've never gone down there yet for prison ministry. I've heard good things about ORW. You'll see these different ceremonies they'll have from women who are graduating from certain programs. It really seeks to rehabilitate women. It was October 4th, 2023, when Sydney got her new attorney, Stephen M. Graciani. Gracian, Stephen M. Gracian, I think you pronounce it. He was appointed to Sydney for the purposes of her appeal due to her said indigence. So she was out of money. I'm sure she paid Don Malarchik quite a pretty penny, but it just didn't fall in their favor. So there was a warrant to convey Sydney from Summit County Jail in Akron over to ORW, which is in Marysville, Ohio. All of that happened in spite of Sydney Nicole Powell getting 58 pages worth of letters in support. A lot of these people, family and friends, they didn't want Sydney either on trial in the first place or they just wanted her to get the minimum sentence and go to ORW if she had to go anywhere. One woman who worked with Brenda since meeting Brenda in 1992 at Children's Hospital wrote, this family has suffered enough. I feel confident when I say this, this is not what Brenda would want. You can read all the letters and watch the body cam footage that I got at the Patreon links below. This case has continued to go viral. I mean, it just really gripped people for some reason as it gripped me since the beginning. Now, Sydney's attorney did not immediately respond to the insider's request for comment. A lot of people are still just following this case and truly people are divided. People did not know which way this would fall. But I know one thing in reading through all these 58 pages worth of letters, the ones that I could read, her family and friends really had a lot to say about Sydney. They really thought it was a psychotic break. Romans 10, 9 and 10. If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified, and it is with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. As you'll see, if you read all these letters in support of Sydney from family and friends, people who knew the family forever, a lot of them had faith that Sydney just snapped. They didn't see her as this manipulative, conniving, narcissistic person that some people on social media are claiming Sydney to be. Sydney's dad, Stephen Powell, wrote to the judge. He wrote, quote, not as a widower or a father, but as one of only a few people that can truly speak for Brenda Powell. 
He continued, I can confirm with 100% degree of certainty that this is not what people are saying is justice for Brenda Powell. He wrote, I firmly believe now that Sydney is properly diagnosed and treatment has been well underway for over three and a half years, her recidivism risk is zero. So Steve, in his letter, he was bemoaning the fact that Sydney did not receive a not guilty by reason of insanity verdict. Steve had urged the judge to consider his belief that Sydney did have a mental disease, even though the jury didn't agree with that. But Steve said she really should have been found in GRI, not guilty by reason of insanity. But he wrote, quote, please look into this case by taking into consideration Sydney's age and her lack of any sort of criminal history. The community will not be any safer with Sydney serving any significant prison time. Sydney's aunt wrote, quote, I truly believe Sydney had a psychotic break. That was a theme throughout a lot of the letters. Sydney's grandmother's friend described meeting Sydney for the first time. Now you may know Sydney did get arrested. She was briefly in Summit County Jail after the crime happened on March 3rd. For a while she went to different treatment centers. Ultimately she was home on bond. She was released on like $25,000 bond and she was able to stay for three and a half years out at her grandmother's farm. So that's when her grandmother's friend met Sydney for the first time after the crime and she wrote, quote, her big brown eyes were peering at me like a lost puppy. She does indeed in these, in the new mugshot, she still has like, she has a look of a deer in headlights to me. But her grandmother's friend went on and said, quote, she was a waif sitting at the table looking at me sad and silent. I thought to myself, how could this child commit such a crime? That's what a lot of people may have thought when looking at Sydney initially. That's what I thought initially looking at Sydney's photos of, especially around the time the crime happened when Sydney was still only 19, about to turn 20. She did look very slender. And when you consider the horrificness of the crime, taking a cast iron skillet and a steak knife to your mom, it just didn't seem to add up with Sydney's appearance. But we know appearances can be deceiving. And her grandmother, Betsy, would write, quote, that wasn't my granddaughter, something happened. During the time she was out on bail, Sydney had even received a job. She got this job with a design and engineering company. This was after the crime and her boss wrote in his letter that he at first spoke with employees. He warned them before he hired Sydney. Of course, he had to give them their say so. Some of them were a little hesitant. But once Sydney came on board, he waxes nostalgic about what a great job she did, how kind she was, how capable she is. And this former boss wrote, quote, to hear Sydney portrayed as a devious, manipulating person is literally the most ludicrous thing I have ever heard. Now, Sydney's uncle asked the judge, quote, I personally feel for my brother Steve and feel after the loss of Brenda, a longer conviction for Sydney would be unjust for him. Why does he have to suffer twice? It was a rhetorical question, I guess, but if you want to read all of the letters sent in, I put the link to the PDF below. I've uploaded that. If you haven't checked out all the body cam footage, it's over there. There's a rule in Ohio where if you're going in someone's house, they have to blur the video and that's what Akron police did. They're great about redacting things we don't want to see. So it's all over there on Patreon, but you can get the gist of what happened that day. Sydney's state of mind. The reason the jury probably likely found her guilty because they weren't buying it. It wasn't, I guess, in their eyes or a lot of members of the public, in their eyes, it wasn't as if Sydney performed this horrible crime and then tried to figure out what happened, like she had no clue. No, it appears that Sydney performed this horrible crime because her truth was spilling out. She had gotten kicked out of the University of Mountain Union because of her grades and it was too much to have that secret revealed. She would have felt like a failure. I don't know, that's why a lot of the mainstream media glommed onto it. It's kind of like, you know, college dropout 
does away with her mom just because she failed out of college. I do believe it's a lot deeper than that. And of course, reading through all these 58 pages again, I can't help but look at the side of the family and friends who were pleading on Sydney's behalf. Of course, I understand why a jury would find her guilty. They weren't buying what some of the experts were selling and claiming she was, you know, psychotic or schizophrenic or out of her mind. And of course, there was one expert on the prosecution side who said, no, I believe she was malingering, she was faking. Sydney tried to cover her tracks by telling her dad someone broke in when it was Sydney who really punched in that back window after doing away with her mother. This case still was a hard one. No matter how viral it is gone, some people are still kind of like, Ugh, I don't know with this case. It's just not cut and dried. It's not black and white. Despite some people not wanting Sydney to go to jail, but instead just still continue to be treated for her mental illness, at least with Sydney getting 15 years to life, if she is paroled by 2038, she will still be a really young woman. She will only be in her 30s and she still will have the potential to go on and get married and perhaps have children and raise a family and go on and live a good life. Whether her dad will still be alive, we don't know. You know, her grandma and all of that. Of course, there are things you miss when you go to prison, but at least ORW is pretty close close enough to Akron, she can have visitors, maybe she'll get the treatment she needs. I don't know, this case is just still one of those weird ones where for some reason people, a smaller percentage of course, but people are still wondering, did the jury get this one right? I guess maybe time will tell. Thank you so much for watching.